Hi there everyone, it's me, Helene, here for some trim on my V-Stitch Baseball Cap. Link below if you haven't seen it already. Now this looks just fine without anything else. I was looking at this hat thinking, you know, it probably could use a little bit of extra something. And, you know, it's not just limited for this hat. You, know, you could do it on uh, a, a regular sun hat. And you know how uh, western hats where they have around a, a trim around the band and then they have conchos around it just placed every so many spaces. You could do something like that. Today we're going to use buttons and it's a really easy thing to do. You're just using two strands of yarn together. Now just to let you know the hat itself I made in the Lion brand 20 Four slash seven cotton. It's 100% mercerized cotton. Perfect for this hat. One ball does it. This is in the color succulent, just like the plants. Okay. And for the trim, I used a little bit different yarn. It is still 100% mercerized cotton. This is by Omega Yarns. They're Sinfonia yarn, and this is in a lighter weight. And you will need two buttons. Now I'm just going to go across the band in line with the brim where the brim stops. I'm going to put one button on either side and fit it right in there. Now I have three rounds on the band and so this braided look is going to fit right in the center and where the trim ends this is where I'm going to put the button. However many stitches you do for the trim will depend on the size of your button and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. Now because I'm putting two strands together you're going to need to go up a little bit a hook size or two or three depending on the type of yarn and the thickness of it. I don't want to add so much weight and bulk where it's going to affect the balance of the hat just enough to give it some trim. And sometimes you might have to try a few stitches just to see the look of it because you want the stitches nice and close together without gaps but not too bunched up. You don't want the work scrunch. You want it nice and smooth and flat. All right, now I am using an H of five millimeter with the two strands of this. It's a sport weight but because of the mercerized cotton it has some bite and texture and it's a very dense yarn so it works up a little thicker. I tried one hook size up and the stitches were too spaced apart. And when you do your tail end leave enough not only to sew in but what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the ends just one strand for less thickness on the back once we anchor each end down then we're going to run that yarn through the stitches and hopefully keep them invisible and then just come up every so many spaces and then just space apart and then just tack that down a little bit. We don't want it tight we don't want it to pull when it goes on our head. So you still need to be able to have the fullness going around so that it, it fits as it should. And the number of stitches are going to depend on the type of yarn you used for the hat and the size. All right, so all you do, it's so easy, you just chain, 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 chain. And when I chain, I pull my working yarn and bring the stitch down a little bit. Okay, make your next chain, bring it down. That will help keep those stitches together. Now the width, the beginning width of this particular style that I designed there are 34 stitches across, but because we are need to get the fullness as it comes around, 
you're making the curve like making a corner so it will probably take a few extra stitches I am going to try about 36 to 38 and if you're using a bigger button on the same hat you probably won't need as many and I will see you in just a minute I wound up with 39 I'm just going to leave them there for now probably have to take out a couple now you just make sure that first slip knot is cinched down real tight and I'm going to just squeeze a little bit and try to flatten that out Okay, so get the back side out of your way have it nice and smooth and flat and here is the last the third row of the band here is that last stitch we don't want to go down here to the base of the braid but to the last stitch and then go up right there to the middle that's where we're going to insert this you can get a yarn needle or a smaller hook if you like make sure your braid is straight that's what I'm going to call it chain bring that through and pull it through so the knot fits just inside and then we're going to bury that a little bit into the strand so you don't see it or feel it and then what we're going to do is the button and this way it is why I said how many you do it depends on the size of the button if you're using a larger button you might just want to go into the stitch before and the button is going to overlap that chain just a little bit so you get a nice seamless or night not seamless but a nice blend from where the braid ends the button begins and it's going to fit right in there and then the trim begins after that so it kind of looks like one continuous piece if you will and I angle that try to place it to where my center holes are right in line with the center of the chain and then I'm going to stretch it just a little bit but I don't want to stretch it tight because this is going to expand when it's on your head and you don't want anything that's going to pull and affect how the placement and the shape is on your head okay and then so I just hold one section down I just give it a slight stretch just so it's smoothed out make sure it's in the middle okay I move my fingers do that again go around and around and to where that last stitch is right here and you can here's the the bottom one if you're not sure and you just go up from that because I wanted to keep it in line where the edge of the brim is or you can just wear the corner of the brim the bottom of the hat stops and the brim begins you can go up from there same spot Okay. Well, I'm going to take one stitch out so mine wound up being 38 and then I'm going to cut a length like I did before so I have enough to weave in my ends and then you know, this as I mentioned I'm going to use one strand from one side to run it through and tack it in a couple of places I'll do the same on the other side so I'm going to leave a little extra here so I have enough to make it across and weave in my ends at, when I stop over here too alright so I'm going to knot this end just like I did and then I'm going to cinch that down nice and tight make sure it's nice and even and then 
bring it through. This is awkward. <laughs> Just like I did on the other side. Well, it's only awkward because of um, the position I am <laughs> in to show you. That's, that's the only reason. Okay. And I think I'm going to take a stitch marker. You can pin it down. You can use a stitch marker, whatever you happen to have around. And I think I'll do one in the center here. So it's nice and even, not moving anywhere. I like using the stitch markers as safety pins sometimes. Keeps it in place without catching on the yarn. Probably if I had another one handy, I would do that. Uh, put another one here. Okay, and then now, get your yarn needle, both strands, and then I want to fit it through the strand, so I'm going to first go under where it's more open, so they'll come, that knot will come through. Don't want to leave a gap, and again, I don't want to pull the stitch through too much. Go back a little bit. I don't want to stretch my stitches out either, but I want to get that knot as much as possible tucked up in there. Then, you can go along, sew in your ends a little bit. Take your time with this. I always take my time with the finishing work. Now keep in mind where your placement is. I want this right in the center. So now I'm going to start running it through. A little bit. Now if you want, this is where you can drop one of the strands of yarn. And we'll finish that up, sew that in later. Rethread the other strand. Now we don't want the thickness, just going to run it through and then every so often it's probably enough. Turn back to the other side. Keep it even. And this would be a good place to just tack it down a little bit. Come back through. Make sure it's in the center. Okay, and then just catch that back underneath that like back bump loop. Okay, see? See how that tacked down? Pull it up a little bit. You can see I caught that third loop on the underneath side. Now I'm going to pull it taut and weave in a little bit more. Want that nice and secure, so I might go around that spot a couple of times and then weave on through. Okay, not really seeing that. Still keeping it invisible and go, you know, another so many stitches. wherever you think it might be another good spot to tack that down there. Now I'll catch that third loop again. Okay, But I like to have a little bit of space so that when you put this on your head, you know, it's, it is, you have that stretch allowance as well. Now I'm going to go back, 
secure that. A couple different directions. Bring that on through. And I'm pretty close to the center here. So I think that's probably where I'm going to stop for this one. On this side, rather. And I'm just weaving in my ends as usual. It's all in the details, my friends. All in the details. You know, and sometimes just something as simple as this. It does take a few minutes, but it's easy to do. This can make a big difference in the finished look. And when you sew on your button, that is going to secure this even more. And then what you can do, you can take this other tail end of that same side we're working on. You can run it back through to the edge. And yes, I see, I don't know how that happened, but I wound up fitting that through the wrong hole. You can see that I meant to go to the edge here. I don't know how I did that. I was so focused on everything else, but yeah, I wound up stretching, stretching that hole out a little bit. So what you can do, if you make a mistake like that, you can just do a little bit of a circle or half circle in the stitches around that hole. It's going to bring them in a little bit. Okay. Give a little, little pull. Cinch that in. Okay, there we go. All right, now you can use the rest of that to sew on the button. If you make a mistake like that, you can go with the bigger button. And then you will just repeat the process on the other side. So I went through my stash and I happen to have these. They almost look like wagon wheels and they're metal. They're really kind of neat and they have a little shape and dimension to them. That is going to fit real well and I like the look of that even a little bit better. I think the size and the scale of that works real nicely. So that's what I'm going to do. Then you can use that to just run it through and pick up in this case the shank on the back or whether you know your button has the holes really doesn't matter and then just continue to secure that button and then you just repeat the same on the other side secure that knot as I showed you move one of the strands out of the way that you're going to use to sew on your next button and then run that through as I showed you and do a tack placement every so often all the way across Here's this last one, so I, I would probably put one you know, here, here, and there, probably. Okay, well that's, that's it. That is it. I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and then I'll just show you how it looks at the end real quick. Before I zoom out and show you the finished piece as I was sewing, on the buttons, I was pondering this outer edging. And I really wasn't happy with that thinner single trim, but I didn't want to take it all apart, waste the yarn. So, this is what I came up with. Now, if you watch the original video, this will make more sense, the original video of the hat. But I have two strands of yarn at the base. And then I took a single strand and all I did was slip stitch in each stitch all the way around. And I made sure that I went through both loops. So there are two strands in the front loop, two strands in the back. And I slip stitched through all of those and it creates this top stitching effect. So all I did was 
I reconnected with a single strand and again in the video I show you how I do that and, and reconnect without any extra knots and lumps and bumps so you have a nice smooth seamless effect and I just went all the way around again with the same size hook I used to for the first which gave me that thinner piece and that was with the H USH 5.5 millimeter so I did the same with my second round and attaching it through again those original loops underneath through the front and back and then I went all the way around and so it gave me a double layer of top stitching so I'm going to go ahead and do the last few with you just to show you so you can just gently push the first section of top stitching forward if you need to but your hook should just slip right in there just make sure you go through both sides and you just the slip stitch as I showed you before make sure your stitches are even don't snug it in too tight because that will bunch your work and you don't want it so loose where you have gaps and your work is uh, gaping at all and that's all you do all the way around okay so here I am back to the beginning rather than slip stitching in the beginning I'm going to do the same thing as I did before cut the yarn make sure you have enough to weave in your ends now rather than take a crochet hook and pull it through because I have so much thickness now a lot of yarn going on I'm going to take the yarn needle put it through into the stitch to the left put that through and pull it through there and pull it through to the back okay there you go you get a nice seamless blended effect and then you can just sew your ends in as usual and because I did not do a knot at the beginning when I sew my ends in just like I did before I might find a little spot where I can add a little knot somewhere as long as I can tuck it underneath one of the other existing stitches that's already there yeah and as tight as this construction is it is not going to work its way out even if you don't put a knot in it and I'll do that one off camera but here is the finished look and you saw it before with the single row and now you have two rows of top stitching that really give a neat like a rope a woven look a braided look however you want to call it and I think it's more in scale and balanced with the trim that I did on the band alright so I'm going to zoom out for a sec and then you can see it a lot better and I go with the flow on this one that's all you do okay nice and neat nice and even filled in that space a little bit which I was hoping it would do and you know sometimes I have found what I originally perceived is a mistake some of my best creations whatever that may be you know whether it's crochet or anything else if you just not stress not worry about it and let your mind just relax then sometimes you know solution it's right there and it will come to you you will see it and then you can create it and you wind up with a whole nother idea and use for a design okay well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it will be useful for you in a project that you work up and hopefully you'll give this hat a try too Okay, take care everyone, stay safe, stay well, and have fun too. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Alright, bye for now.